my beautiful budding bakers, what a beautiful day! We're going to do the bare necessity, the simple bare necessities. I'm sad with my life. <laughs> so, this morning we are doing the most, the easiest figurine you can imagine. If you want to zoom in there, babes, have a look at our beautiful budding baking bear. So we have done this really cute bear with minimal equipment and colors. And we've also done it exactly the same, except we'd made the bear in pink. So this particular model is so easy to do. It's fantastic for kids. And with modeling, the paste that I'm going to use today is I'm gonna try it because I came across this and I haven't seen it before. So I said I'd try it. So this is Dunn Store's own brand pink fondant and then I do use the Tesco fondant for my figurines because I like the consistency because it's cheap and it also means that I don't use our use up my icing that I use for my cakes so anytime I'm using my cakes I use select I love select it's the most beautiful Irish paste it's divine I cover all my cakes in it this is great for modeling so Tesco own brand, gulp, <laughs> Tesco own brand, and then I've got my team fondant. And I am giving a shout out this morning to Jean and Lizzie in New York, who were watching and are making the Clementine and Almond cake. So best of luck, Jean, hope you and Lizzie are diving into Clementine cake for breakfast. So we are starting with some paste. Now before I colour it, we're gonna get stuck in and just go straight in for the bear, because at least if I show you just the techniques, I'll show you tricks, and tips along the way. But, lads, I can see clearly now the rain has gone. Nicola Bowen in Carrigaline Opticians. I've even got my glasses chain all the trend this year and I'm wearing my beautiful Kate Spade glasses. I can see. have to wear glasses when I'm doing my modelling. Nicola, they are amazing. I can see my future with these glasses, they're brilliant. So, first things first is I'm going to knead this paste. Now, first trick tip of the day. This is a brand new pop sock, okay? So it's like stocking. I have filled it with two tablespoons of corn flour and one tablespoon of icing sugar. And it is fabulous for dusting. So I just want a little bit of icing sugar. I don't want it all over the place, so tip. If you have a sugar shaker, fantastic. These are cheaper. It's a pop sock filled, two tablespoons of corn flour, one tablespoon of icing sugar, dust your worktop, and you have just enough to work with. Fantastic for kids as well, because it's only doing, 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 a bit like a yo-yo, the kids think it's hilarious. So I'm going to knead my paste, and I'm gonna roll it into a ball. Now, after about 20 plus years, you get an idea in relation to scale and weight for figurines and for bears, etc. So to give you an idea, <laughs> up my glasses to give you an idea, it's roughly about 40 grams in weight that I will use for the body of the bear. Okay, so the brown I have used, and I'll show you how I've dyed it, I have used a sugar flare brown, dark brown, and it's very similar in texture to toothpaste. So I've used the tip of my kneif and I have put it into white paste and I've kneaded it. So, because sometimes the colours that you do get are quite vibrant and I wanted a toned down teddy bear. So, I'm rolling out, using the heat of my hand is going to soften the sugar paste. Now, another trick as well, to get that lovely smooth texture on your icing, if you rotate once and on the other, so you're clockwise, anti-clockwise, clockwise, anti-clockwise, anti you'll end up with a lovely smooth body for your bear without any cracks. Now, I'm going to use the teardrop. Teardrop is for everything when you're doing figurines. So there's a slight pressure, so you're pushing down on one side to create, for all the world, like a teardrop exclamation. That is the base of our body. So putting our little bear on the top, we're going to get two, in fact, four pieces in total of paste and they're going to be round balls. Now, as you can see already, I have not introduced any form of equipment. So this is as cheap as chips in relation to making 
all you need, the most important vital equipment are your magic fingers. So we have got four balls. Each one of these balls weighs out approximately five grams. So you've got 40 grams for the body, 20 grams for the head in weight and five grams each of the legs and arms. So again, I'm going to do exactly the same technique. Now this is amazing when you start doing modeling and you realize the teardrop is the basis, the foundation for any modeling. It looks like baseball bats. So all we're doing is creating four baseball bats and this is going to be the arms and also the legs of our bear. So we have got, now I'm giving my hands because <laughs> one thing about corn flour, for some of you who can't stand the texture of maybe cotton balls and the synthetic feel, me and corn flour, buh, 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 buh. I do not like the feeling, but it is fabulous because it keeps your hands nice and dry, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to do the indentation of the feet for the bear, followed by the arms. So I'll always do the feet first because that'll just give it foundation. It'll also secure the bear onto the board. Talking about boards, I'll just get a little gold board. And I got these on Amazon, I'll send you the link. These are fantastic. Because as you can see, this is on a polystyrene dummy, but you can cover that board in white and then you've got your little figurine all ready to transfer on top of a cake. And you can make these months in advance. You could do your Christmas teddy bears now. <laughs> so getting my little bear, I'm gonna sit it on. Now I will do it at an angle because obviously I need to see what I'm doing. So we've got our prepared little leg. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bend it over my finger. So it's gonna look like a bent hockey stick or an L. I'm gonna pinch the back to create an ankle. And then all I'm doing is I'm just rotating and it looks like the start of your little bear. Beep, beep, beep. Now with my trusty knife, I'm just going to push in an indent to create the foot. So doing that again. So we've got our club. We're gonna bend it over my finger. So it looks like an L. Pinch the back gently. Don't hard, don't pinch it too hard, because if you pinch it too hard, you'll, <laughs> you'll take off his ankle. So what you're doing is you're pinching ever so gently and then rotate and you've got your club. Now, another thing to bear in mind, I'm not using the sharp part of the knife, I'm using the back part of the knife and I am scoring down. I am not scoring like this because you'll end up with a funny foot. I am scoring where I'm holding it with my index and my thumb, and I'm just going to press down. You can hear a robin fart, it is so quiet in my kitchen. So you have got the club foot. So tiny bit of water and another trick for kids. Get a small little container, you don't need paintbrushes. Dip your finger, wipe the excess on your hand, and just put a tiny bit of water on either side. You can use a sugar glue, but water is cheaper and it does just the job. So when I'm going to secure it, I'm just going to take off at an angle. So at an angle, it makes it much easier to secure onto the side of the teddy bear because you've just cut, cut a little section and it can secure onto the side of the bear. Lift that up and just show you. So where I've cut, it has tucked itself nice and neatly into the bear, and you've got one foot. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing on the other side. Tiny bit of, whoop, of water, excess on your hand so it doesn't dribble like flour snot onto your bear. That would be not cool. And there we have the start of our bear. Make sure he's sitting up properly. Now, another bit of, an, of um, equipment that you need is a tiny bit of spaghetti. This will act as a support for your figurine. I tend not to put any of the plastic unless I'm doing figurines. If I'm doing small little bears, the spaghetti will keep the bear intact, but as the bear starts to solidify and set within the icing, the spaghetti, the spaghetti, the spaghetti, that starts to soften. You still need to tell your client, your customer, your friends, your family, that it is still considered a choking hazard because you've got spaghetti in it, but also because as that dries solid, you've got a solid bit of icing that's hard to eat. So if you've a child that eats it, it's a ch 
considered a choking hazard. Ch 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 choking hazard. It cannot talk. So in goes my bit of spaghetti. Now, to give you a guideline in relation to how much of the spaghetti left at the top for a head, I'll put my finger and I'll snap off just a finger's width for the head. So I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> So I have got a bit of paste. Again, I'm manipulating it in my hand again because sugar paste needs to be kept into a bag. So anytime I've coloured paste, I would always keep it in a bag. These are fantastic and they're from Duns. Again, super Duns come to the rescue. They are fabulous for tiny bits of icing. I would always keep my icing in little bags like this because there's no waste. Again, we're gonna roll, roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it. And the other way, Oops, squeaky eye. <laughs> so we have got our round shape. And again, I'm going to turn this around because I just need to see. Tiny bit of water. And I'm just going to put it on the base of the neck so it'll secure. And this, as I said, the body is 40 and then you've got 20 gram head. And it's just to exaggerate the top of the bear. Okay, so we've got the head, we've got the body, we've got the legs. Urmf! Our next. So again, we have got exactly the same shape as the body, the legs, and now comes the arm. So we've made our shape, and I'm just going to ever so slightly bend it. And as I'm bending, bending it, I'm just smoothing, smoothing. <laughs> I cannot talk this morning. I need a double espresso. So it looks a bit like a hurley. Tiny bit of water again on the side. Now this is where you do not put too much water because what will happen is if you put too much water on it, you'll find that the arm will start to slide like a slug down the side of your teddy bear. So tiny bit, and the way to activate your icing is by tapping it. As you tap it, and if you really, you can't see from the camera, but if you go down yourself and have a good, good nose around the bear, you will see there'll be tiny sugar peaks from the icing and it creates this little tacky, um, tacky adhesive which makes it much easier to put on the arms. So again, I'm bringing up the arm. I'm not indenting the arm because I'm making it more cartoon-like. This is where, as you get into the zone with your bear, so we now have the arms, the, e the, the eggs, the legs, the arms, the head. <laughs> you do the face of the bear and the ears so we have got again a tiny bit now this I would consider probably even smaller again a petit bois a tiny pea size of fondant and I'm gonna plop it and I'm gonna flatten it like so and then I'm gonna cut it in half again tiny bit of water, need to turn it around to make sure. And I'm just gonna secure the ears. Make sure you're not gonna put the ears too close on top. You can see here from the teddy bear that the bear's ears are quite wide. Any closer and your bear will then become more of a cat, almost like Garfield. So the wider the ear, the better for teddy bears. And just like that, we're gonna stick on our little ear. Now, if I feel, because I'm looking at that and his head is leaning a little bit back just because of the weight of the head, because with 20 grams, so I'm just going to take it off and just secure the spaghetti. Because the great thing is you're in control. Now, and it's funny because looking at these two bears, they have a sort of a George Clooney going on. So the head is slightly tilted. So you can do that too. That's just to give more movement. So we have our little bear. Now, with the color, I have just diluted almost this color and toned it down by adding a tiny, tiny bit of pink. And the pink was pink fondant. So I had brown and I added a tiny bit, bit of pink fondant to give me that, almost like a, a very light brown color. And again, all I'm doing is taking a tiny bit of paste and as I'm waiting, I'll put this into the bag to keep it nice and sticky and I'll roll into a ball. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna roll into a tic-tac because that's going to give me the shape. And what I'm going to do is, is it's almost like the shape of a pectinum that you play with your 
petulum, as you play with your guitar. The plucky thing that you have with the guitar. So you've got your tic tac, you're going to flatten it, and then all I'm doing this is I'm just pulling it towards me. And as I'm putting that towards me, it's creating almost a chin like for the bear. If you can see that in shape. And as you can see with the bear here, I've put it quite high, but I've tucked it right underneath the chin. And the next thing, and what do you do next? And what do you do next, Trish? Put a tiny bit of water on the bear again. Upside down is kind of difficult, so I need to turn them around. Or it could be a she. And I'm gonna press that onto the bear. So it's taking over the bear's face completely. Okay, so it's like he's a masked crusader. Now in order, this is another tip of the, tri tip of the day. If you have a plate with all your bits and pieces and as you're working to keep putting it back on the plate, you won't lose things. So I have a round nozzle and with that round nozzle, I'm gonna indent a sort of a smile for the bear. So you can see the bear and indenting is just rocking motion left to right using the end of a round nozzle. Now you could use a wide straw. So in other words, I've got these huge cake support skewers, but you can cut that in half, very similar to a straw, and you'd have a smile shape. Anything that will create an indentation. And you can also, of course, use a knife. So all I'm doing here is I'm just going to rock left to right to create that smile but then I'm going to come in with my knife and I'm just going to find the center of that mouth and push it down you can see that and then I can't feel it sit out and then just push it gently together so it'll give it a sort of a cheeky puckered lips puckered up babes and then we have got dark brown. And again, I've just added more of the dark brown paste to more fondant to get this gorgeous chocolate brown. And I'm going to take a tiny bit of paste. Again, like a petit pois, even a really teeny tiny pea. And the magic tic-tac, rolling the tic-tac, and that's going to be the nose, okay? So before I put on the nose, I have got some black fondant. Now, it's one thing I will not dye myself. I will always buy black already prepared because the last thing I want is to have my hands completely covered in black dye. So I do not dye it myself. I buy it pre-made. Tiny, hence these magnificent new glasses. Thank you, Nick Lebone, Optician and Caroline. I can see what I'm doing. So keep it local, lads. Anyone from Caroline, if you need your eyes tested and new glasses, go to Nicola. She's amazing. So again, two tiny little eyes. Move this out of the way so you can see. So we've got two tiny beads. Now with those tiny beads, you will need a steady hand. You can also use what they call as a food pen and you can indent into your figurine the black eye. The only reason I tend not to use the food pen is when the figurines themselves are wet you'll find that the ink starts to space out and it's like they've been eating magic brownies and they're totally spaced out man. So don't put the food colouring pen on your figurines when the fondant is still soft. It needs to set and then you have control because you'll form a skin on the icing of the fondant and you can then put on your eyes. Don't do it. They will look like as if they're high on magic brownies. Wait until they're dry. Not that I've ever, ever tasted magic brownies. So I don't even know what they are. Tiny bit of water. And again, I'm just going across the top rim, just the top rim of my face. And I have to turn it around to give him or her the eyes that they deserve. So... In goes one eye. They look rather peculiar now without the nose. See, and I've just dropped. Where is it gone? <laughs> I should be able to see with these glasses, 
But with this island, every part of it looks like as if there are tiny black eyes. So now he looks very strange at the moment because he hasn't got his nose. So as I mentioned, we've got our little chocolate brown nose. We're gonna add a tiny bit of water again. Now, as you can see, all of this has been done without any form of equipment. And I'm gonna put on the nose. And again, tiny bit more water, because obviously it wasn't enough because the arm hasn't settled. And we have our little bear. Now, I also have a little dusting powder, pink dusting powder. And with pink dusting powder, again, in your girl goes your little paintbrush. Now, these can be these really cheap paintbrushes. It doesn't really matter. If you don't have, now this is so battered because I've had it for at least a year. It's dusty pink and I use it all the time. It's a florist, um, cake florist dusting powder. And it is just fantastic. It's by Sugar Flare. But you can get a lot of cake flour Cake flour, you can get a lot of powdered edible food dust on sugar crafts, um, uh, sugar, craft, sugar craft websites. You've got Stuff and Cakes, you've got Bake World, oh, Bake World, you have got Gingerbread House in Middleton, you've the Sugar Sisters, you've got Cakers World, they're all over Ireland. All you need to do is put in your www, which I will put up the links. And I'm gonna put a tiny bit of pink, and all that is is just giving it a bit of lift. I'm putting it on the top. And you've got your little, your little bear. It's your little bear. Now, how to create a heart, again, without a cutter, is I've got my pink. And I'll take a piece out. And the size of a grape, make sure I don't have any. Don't worry, it's not a super, super sharp knife. I'm just getting rid of any black that I have on my hand rather than washing it. Manipulate the paste again. And you know when the paste is ready because it sort of clicks. It sort of goes. Roll into a ball and you're going to flatten. So you basically have a flattened circle. So without a cutter, you just take a little bite out of that circle. And you soften the tip. And then what you're going to do is you're going to pull the base down to create that shape. And as I want a smaller love heart, I don't want it elongated too much, I just pinch it. So as I'm doing, I'm just holding and securing and then pulling the icing. And what's lovely is it leaves that sort of teardrop, lovely sharp point of the heart that's emphasized just a boink. Turn it around to just soften the edge. And again, I'm just going to flatten it down towards because I just want another little emphasize and just pinch the bottom. Turn our bear around. Oh no, you can now see his bear behind. <laughs> on a roll, lads. So, tiny bit of water on the bear's belly. And we've got our little bear. Now I have added edible gold leaf to that. I've added a sort of a party hat and all the party hat again is just using your paste, rolling out and showing you very quickly because bear in mind, <laughs> these are very versatile cake toppers. So don't just think this is for Valentine. These are great for first birthday. They're great for christening cakes. They're great for first or for birthday cakes. So any celebration, engagement, so I am cutting out a strip. And as I cut out a strip, I'm going to go, again, cut it at an angle because I'm creating the crown. Turn it around. I'm going to find the center point and from the center point, I'm going to just even it up a bit. From the center point, I'm just going to cut out a bite of a triangle and I'm going to continue in a zigzag fashion across the top of the icing Nicola, I'll be able to see things from space with these glasses. <laughs> you don't realize how bad your eyes are until you go to Nicola and she sorts you all out. Can you tell I'm a happy customer? So turn our little party hat and just indent the bottom. And we have got a flat, ziggy zaggy with bite marks across the top. And a tiny again, tiny bit of water. Rub it on your hand. 
And then all I'm going to do is just slightly bend it over my finger just to create that crown effect. And have it at a slight angle. And when this is dry, you could put some glitter on it, put some gold. So it's sitting up there now. And we have got our little bear. Now, as I mentioned, we've got exactly the same bear. We've toned the color to a real sort of a tiny baby, baby pink. And then, as I mentioned, that could be for a first birthday. So I've just done a little number one with a little stand next to it or not. And you have a little number one. Now, when you're creating that number one and you don't have moles and you don't need moles, let's move, let's clean as you go, clean as you go. With my fondant that comes out of the bag, this is another trick. And you know, I cannot take any credit for this technique. So 25 years I'm doing wedding cakes, celebration cakes. I have friends all over the country that are doing cakes. This I'm crediting to Karina Murphy, Karina's Cakes in Douglas. This is a fantastic knack for creating numbers for kids' birthdays. So I am slicing a chunk off the icing. Make sure again, as you're seeding it up, I'm just going to top and tail just to give a clean finish. And then I'm going to create the number one. And that's great. It's already a block that will stand on its own. So you don't have to add any strengthener. It's fabulous for doing first birthdays, particularly because of the number. So I'm going to take a little section at the bottom, like a little bite. And I'm going to bring it all the way to the top. And as I do, I'm going to repeat on the other side, a little bite and a little bite at the top. And I'm just going to score that section in the middle. Now I do have a good knife. It helps. Okay, that comes out. And then we'll take the little section off for the number one. And if it needs any trimming, you have got a number one that has been made in literally seconds. And you can put that on top of your birthday cake. So you don't have to add any strengthener. When I am adding strengthener to cakes, whoops, when I'm adding strengthener, is that upside down or it's not? When I'm adding a strengthener and I need figurines, particularly um, if I'm doing cake toppers and I need them to be holding something and they need to look like the Statue of Liberty and they need to freeze, you add Tylo powder. So T-Y-L-O, Tylo powder is a powder that you add to your paste. And we might as well add it to white paste and I'll show you how we color the brown and that will complete the tutorial. So with our Tylo powder, it's normally one teaspoon of Tylo powder to 500 grams of icing, but it really depends on how strong you need this figurine or this model to stand up. So we have got this powder, make a little well in the center and I'm probably going to add about a, maybe a quarter of a teaspoon. Fold it up on itself. This is worth its weight in gold if you want to continue and do lots of models, if you don't want arms falling off, if you want them to stand straight, if you want them standing up on cakes with supports, Tylo is essential for your figurines. So it looks like a Cornish pasty. <laughs> so I'm just going to knead it into that paste. And anything that comes out from the pocket of fondant, I just scoop up or mop up using the soft fondant. And with my paste, I'm gonna get the tip of my knife and I'm gonna get, as you can see, it's quite thick, heel of my hand indent and smear the knife to get rid of any of that color. Fold it over on itself and knead until you have the de desired, desired, desired effect. Oh, look. My glasses are moving with my chain. I'm feeling very Nanny McPhee this morning with my chain, but they are fantastic because I keep losing my glasses. So now because they are chained around my neck, <laughs> they will not end up disappeared or eaten by my mounds of laundry. So as you can see, the color of this brown is a lovely fawn light brown color. And the more you add, the paste, obviously the dark will become. But as you're kneading this, and this applies to anything, if you're doing even a cake and if you're doing it on a larger scale, always slice down the middle because for what you think, maybe 
completely mixed together. It's actually not. So it's only such time as you slice the middle and you see if there's any marbling effect, again, back to the start, manipulate the icing until you get your color you want, slice down the center, make sure, another two seconds I'd say, of kneading, because I do not want to have any marbled color in the sugar paste and it can ruin a cake. Boom, perfect. So if I want that color, that color then will go into a little bag. Go for a snooze. And it's always gel paste you will use. Gel paste is fantastic, not the liquid. The liquid will alter your icing. Now for any of you who want to go to do speed, Karen Davis, if you're out there in cyberspace, you're amazing. Karen Davis is the creator of these incredible molds. These molds are quick, they're fast, they're easy, they're superb to have on a standby. We have got some gorgeous animals where they could be used for christening cakes, for birthday cakes. Valentine by introducing their little molds and they pop out. You've got your teddy bears, you've got dogs, you've got baby teddy bears, you've got big teddy bears, you have got babies and teddy bears. And they're as simple as, don't lose the will to live lads, we're nearly there. Thanks Sophie. <laughs> so I'm rolling, 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 a bit of fondant. Now, there is a bit of strengthener in this. And one of the things as well, where's my pop saw? Give it a tiny bit of dusting. And I'm just gonna shape it into the mold. So looking at the shape of the teddy bear, what I tend to do, now obviously everybody is different, I'm almost just pulling out the shape that it could end up with my bear and I'm just gonna push it into the mold. And this is so easy. And last tip of the day, Karen, if you're watching, Aldi have a brand of fudge. It's quite hard in the packet. You manipulate it with your fingers and it is fantastic for filling Karen Davis moulds because it means you don't use fondant, you use the softened fudge that you get in Aldi, which I think in Ireland is about maybe under 70 cent. And you can manipulate it so much so it goes into a mould and you've got these gorgeous fudge bears. So all I'm doing is pressing it in and with the magic of Karen Davis molds, they just literally pop out and you have a bear. So these are absolutely fantastic. They can vary from anything from eight euro, 10 euro, 13 euro. I've had these for years. They are an amazing investment. You can put marzipan, I've got almond paste. You can use almond paste in the molds. You can even set chocolate in these molds. They're absolutely fantastic. So if you wanted something even quicker again to do on a commercial level, these are absolutely amazing. You still get the most incredible effect. Karen Davis, her molds are superb. And I'll put the link up on the Facebook. Lads, lasses, ladies, gents, I'm so sorry. That was a long one. But listen, it was worth the wait. I couldn't bear not to show you all those tricks and tips. So I'd love to see how you manage your bears. Post up some photographs, tag me in some photos of bears that you have done. Simplicity itself, the only tools we've used, we've used a knife, we've used a bit of spaghetti, blusher should you need it, everything else we've managed with our magic fingers. I shall see you next Sunday at 10.